Hi, everyone. I'm Cody. I'm a marketing specialist here at QNAP. I'm here with our product manager, Deval. Well, good morning, everybody. And today we're going to be going over our expansion units and how you can scale your QNAP mass storage. Uh, we'll then have a demo from Deval, followed by Q&A time, where you can ask us any questions that you might have. Uh, you can just uh, type those in the, in the questions. So here we have a few options that can be taken in the event that if you need to increase your storage capacity of your NAS, <clears throat> adding drives, replacing drives, or attaching an expansion unit. If you don't fill all of the drive bays upon initialization of your NAS, simply adding additional drives is a great option as it won't require you to buy any new equipment other than the drives. And you can continue using the drives that you already have in the NAS. However, this is only a feasible option if you have some drive bays vacant and available on the NAS. If you don't have any vacant drive bays, another option you can take is to replace your drives one by one with larger drives. This will enable you to gain more storage on the NAS, but doesn't necessarily utilize your older drives and you're limited to whatever you can fit within the NAS. The third way to increase your storage, and the one we want to talk about today, is connecting an expansion unit to your NAS to create an additional RAID array that can be utilized from your NAS interface. This enables you to keep your original drives on the NAS and add new drives to, <clears throat> to greatly scale the capacity of your storage solution. We build expansion units that connect via one of three ways, USB connection, SATA connection, or SAS connections. The TR series is one of our USB connecting expansion units and features a hardware RAID switch, as well as the ability to use a software RAID. So when setting this up, you have the option of either, of either one, but if you change your mind, you would need to initialize the whole thing and wipe the data uh, reinitialize your, to reinitialize your system for a different option. But one, one key feature of the TR series is that it can function as either NAS expansion or external storage. If you're using the hardware RAID, you will be configuring this NAS as external storage. So you could use this not only for NAS storage, but also as an external storage device for Macs or PCs. However, if you are using this as an external storage, it won't exactly be NAS expansion that shows up in your storage, storage and snapshots on the QNAP UI, but rather would appear to the NAS as any other external drive. In addition to hardware RAID, there's a software RAID option as well. If you set this expansion unit to software RAID, you can either manage the RAID through uh, QNAP's QTS operating system, or you can uh, use QNAP external RAID manager. The, the QNAP external RAID manager can be downloaded to your Mac or PC from, QNAP, from the QNAP utility site. And once installed, you'll be able to use this to uh, set up and manage the TR expansion. You, well, you can basically monitor your RAID, monitor uh, the disk health and things of that nature. And, um, and you can, yeah, you can view the drive health basically and view disk information. Another USB based expansion unit is the TLD800 expansion model. Also like the TR series, this unit can function as external storage for individual workstations. It does not include a hardware RAID switch and does not run a hardware RAID. This unit can either use the software RAID of the QTS operating system, or it can use QNAP's JBOD manager, which is another application that can be downloaded to your Mac or PC from the QNAP utility site. Something to keep in mind is that this application does not itself handle the RAID configuration, but rather the uh, software RAID of the host device. 
is, is used. So if you're using um, a Mac, certain RAIDs such as RAID 5 or 6 are not natively supported. So you would have to use a third-party software uh, if you wanted to use a RAID 5 for external storage with a Mac. Uh, Mac does, however, support RAID 1 uh, natively. If using Windows, RAID, uh, RAID 5 is supported. So keep in mind that the RAID configurations available are dependent on the host software when using this unit. Uh, but if you're using this model as NAS expansion, this won't come up as QNAP's QTS software supports RAIDs 0, 1, 5, 10, 50, and 60. And for a little more depth on the QNAP JBOD manager, I'm going to hand things over to Deval, and uh, he's going to give us a little more, more depth on some of these. Thank you very much, Cody. All right, so um, all right. So the QNAP, the new QNAP JBOD manager is a software that we have introduced to manage our new TLCDs JBOD, uh, TLCDs JBOD uh, enclosures. Those include the new USB tape TL, uh, JBOD enclosures, the SATA JBOD enclosures, as well as um, as well as the SAS JBOD enclosures. So. Uh, the JBot enclosure or uh, the manager or QNAP JBot manager is what the new software is called is uh, as I mentioned is a new software that manages a new JBot manager. The software allows you to monitor and uh, your expansion for any hardware issues such as temperature for temperature issues, fan issues or monitor the disk information. You can find out the disk information about uh, um, uh, yeah, if you if you if you want to manage your disk information like health of the disk or if the disk is about to go bad, you, you will be able to get more information about that uh, uh, about that uh, about that uh, disk in, uh, about that particular disk. And you can go ahead and replace the disk if you need it, uh, or you know make sure you copy your data off of it if you're not using any kind of RAID. So here are some major differences between our USB TL, TR series enclosures that that we had uh, that we have before, and then the new TL JBot enclosure. The connectivity for the new uh, TL are, is the USB 3.1 Gen 2, so 10 gigabit connection between your host device and the enclosure. So very fast, uh, um, very fast. Uh, very, fa very fast connection speeds between the host and the enclosure. Uh, the number of bays we have for the TL, we have the desktop model, which is an eight bay model, as well as uh, a rack mount model, which is a 12 bay rack mount models. Uh, the TR usually comes with two or four, uh, two or four bays only. The supported operating system remains the same for both units. We have QTS, QNAP QTS, QTS Hero, Windows and Mac and Linux operating systems, same for the TR. Uh, the, you're, you are able to create a storage pool on the on the on the new TL as well as the old TR models, but the new TL model supports the RAID the the QNAP's uh, you know RAID migration tools, RAID expansion tools. So if you start with let's say on an eight bay unit, you start with a four bay um, four bay RAID five unit, you can keep adding more drives uh, as and when you require. On the old TR, you cannot do that. As well as you can also do RAID migration as well. For example, you can start with um, five disk RAID five, and let's say if you, for example, you add a sixth disk and you want to go to RAID six because that's what you feel comfortable with. You can always migrate with uh, with adding an additional RAID. Uh, the, the new TL is only software RAID. Um, there's no hardware RAID uh, on the new TL, and then also the RAID level migration. As I mentioned before, you can do migration from RAID 1 to RAID 5 to RAID 6. So that is supported on the two new TL, but it's not supported on the old TR. And uh, the scenarios for the new TL is basically high capacity expansion, right? It's an 8 bay unit, 12 bay unit, so you have a lot of disks. Uh, a lot of disk to work with. So the high capacity unit that you can connect your computer to, let's say for example, if you're a video, a video editor, you can connect it to your Mac and get a high expansion, even 100 terabyte, 50 terabyte, 60 terabyte expansion units uh, by adding larger capacity drives on the on the new TL units. The two, the old TR is basically cloud, cloud, cross platform or plug and play unit, right? So if you have <clears throat> smaller amounts of data, because it's 4B units, not much data can be stored in that unit, but you can always <clears throat> move data around. So you can co connect it to a computer, copy some data, and then move it to a NAS or another computer, move that data across. But the TL is basically 
a standalone unit that you want to connect to to a single computer and just expand that computer's ex, um, expand that computer storage to a larger capacity. You can also connect it to a, a QNAP NAS and expand it, uh, create a storage pool, and now you can use it uh, with the QNAP NAS to have a larger capacity NAS. Um, also, it's a USB 3.1 Gen 2, which is which is much faster, right? It's 10 gigabit connection because if you have a larger uh, because you have a, a lot uh, more amount of disk, the performance also, because you have more disks, the performance also gets, um, uh, also is increased, okay? You can see on the next slide that we, uh, the performing numbers for the new TLJ bot. These are the numbers I was mentioning about the, uh, the, the new TL expansion, USB expansion base. So look at the numbers. So we have a, um, so it's it is set up on a RAID system, so um, to the numbers will be combined with all the disks. So with, when you connect it to a Windows 10 computer, you almost get uh, uh, almost get 1,000 megabytes per second. Similarly to Ubuntu computers, um, you can reach uh, you know almost 1,000 megabytes of a second for read speeds. Also, same for NAS. If you connect it to a NAS, similar performance on the NAS as well. So uh, great performance when you connect it to different computers, and then it does support Mac operating system computer operating system and Ubuntu and Linux operating system. So you do have the option um, to um, to connect these to multiple different operating systems and then expand their storage. So if you connect it, like if you're a video, video editor, you can connect it to a computer and then use it um, and then use it with, and you can expand the computer storage uh, or Mac storage and then exp uh, like you can copy all your uh, video editing data onto the expansion bay, you know, and then it gets set up RAID right on that unit. And then uh, with uh, so for rate for setting up rate on the t new TL units, it does depend upon the computer itself. So if you're using a Mac, it, it, you need to have any a, a software within the Mac um, that you can connect. Uh, you you need to have um, to you know set up rate. Uh, same similarly for win, uh, com Windows computer, there's a storage space option. Uh, on on the new Windows 10 computers. So if you have using Windows 10, you can set up a Windows 10, uh, uh, you can set up storage spaces on the Windows 10 computers. I'll, I'll show you that in a demo in the, at the later part of the day, um, the how to set up storage spaces. And for Ubuntu computers, you can use something like MDADM to set up your RAID. So you can set up MDADM and set up a RAID on the, on the JBART. But if you don't set up a RAID, you will see just a bunch of disks. So on the Mac computer, you will see eight disks that you have installed on the TLD800C or 12 disks on the rack mod model. So you just see a bunch of disks you can set up. You can also set up different um, you can just set up them by itself. You don't have to set up a RAID, but you can just set up by itself. And But you'll be limited to performance of that particular disk. All right, so, but if you set up an array, then you just combine the performance of the disk to get a higher performance. And uh, the next we're going to talk about is a new TL SATA JBOT series expansion. And it's, now, this is a SATA expansion that you connect it via SATA cable. Um, again, the RAID is, uh, RAID is managed again with the same software, the JBOT manager, um, that, you can, um, that you can connect it to. Uh, you can, uh, again, the same RAID. Uh, uh, rate setup as well. You have to, uh, so it, it supports Windows computer and Ubuntu Linux computer. So you can set up um, storage spaces on the Windows computer as well as MDADM on the you know, Ubuntu Linux or whatever operating system you're using. You can use any software to set up a rate as long as it does support it on the, uh, as long it does support software rates. As long as you have a software rate software or a software that supports rate, you can just set up that with the, with the QNAP and it should. Um, and it should work. We do include the SATA uh, cards and the cables with the unit. So you can just connect it to your, uh, so you, when you purchase the expansion bay on the box, you will, you'll have everything that you need to connect your uh, new expansion to the NAS or the computer. So you don't have to worry about purchasing additional hardware for this. Um, again, so we have, uh, we have expansion for desktops all the way from four bay up to 16 bay. And then for the rack mods, we have 12 and four bay as well. Again, it be uh, a single SF, the, the gus, it comes with SFF8088 cable uh, that can handle up to four SATA, six gigabit connection, up to 24 gigabytes, gigabits of transfer speed. And if you're using multiple cables, it can achieve up to 64 gig, gigabits of connection speed between host and the JBOT manager or the JBOT. It does support NAS operating system, the QTS, QTS Hero, Windows, Ubuntu, and Linux computers. So you don't have to worry about what operating system you're connecting to. Uh, again, as I mentioned, the the card and the cable comes with the unit. So each cable that you're using, it supports up to four 
drives. And then, so with a 4B unit, you come with, it comes with one card that has one SATA port as, and one cable. Uh, for the 8B comes with um, two, it comes with a card that supports two SATA ports and two cables. And uh, for the 16B, it comes with a single card that has four SATA ports and uh, four cables. And uh, uh, so, it, so each, as I mentioned, each cable, each cable can support up to four drives. So, um, uh, so you can have up to four drives that you connect, or sorry, up to 16 drives on each uh, on four cables. And uh, for the exp for the rack mounts, we have again, it comes with um, uh, the four bay comes with one card that has one SATA port and one cable. For the 12 bay, it comes. We don't have a card that has three SATA ports, so we do send out a card with four SATA ports, but it comes with three cables. So it doesn't matter where the connect where, the, where you connect the cable on the on the card. As long as you have three cables connected to the expansion and the card, uh, this should work fine for you. This card should work on computers and Mac, uh, sorry, Windows computers and Mac computers. We do have, we do provide drivers for them. So you don't have to worry about uh, installing any software. As long as you have the drivers and the software for JBot Manager, it, it's good to go. Here are some numbers that we do provide for the expansion units. Uh, we did we did test we did test it with the TLD 800S and with eight SSD drives to get these numbers. So if you as you can see, um, it can reach very high speeds, about 3,000 megabytes per second, on um, on a Windows or Ubuntu computers. On a NAS, it can get even higher at about 3,500 3,500 megabytes per second on read and then 3,100 on write. So pretty high numbers. Uh, and it's also it's also a middle tier expansion bay uh, as far as the pricing goes. So it's very economical, but you get higher numbers of performance when you connect it to your computer or NAS or Ubuntu computers. So you do get higher performance compared to our USB, uh, but it's less performance compared to say uh, the SAS ones because SAS are larger drives. So that's what I'm gonna talk about next. Uh, again, as I mentioned, it does support PC and Ubuntu computers. And the next and last expansion we're going to talk about today is the new generation of 12 and 16 bay SAS expansion that replaces the REXP expansion units, the TLR 2012 or 20, sorry, 1220 SCP RP and the 1620 SCP RP. This is our top of the line expansion units that we do that supports SAS. Now, the main difference between the REXP and the new ones are it does support. Um, it, it is it is Windows 2019 certified, so you can connect it to a Windows computer to expand its storage for the Windows computer using the SAS cards. Um, so you can connect. It does support VMware Data Store, so you can connect this to um, uh, so you can connect this uh, the SAS JBot via LSI, SAS, or an HBS. Uh, HBA, sorry, and with VMware servers, expand the uh, VMware capacity to VMS, uh, VMFS type uh, storage, and then you can expand the storage to install, to get more VMs or provide more storage to your VMs or host more VMs onto your VMware, um, VMware environment as well. So it does support VMware environment, you can connect it there as well. Um, we do have so on the new expansion we do have something called SAS zoning settings so this allows you to have multiple zones within the expansion to connect it to um, uh, to uh, let's say you can connect this to um, multiple servers and you can assign eight drives to one of the servers and the other eight drives to the sec second server and then um, and then so so the server from each from the other unit won't be able to see drive from the other zone so you can create multiple zones on this server and then have multiple servers connected to the same expansion base so you can have the so you don't have to purchase multiple expansion to connect to expand multiple different servers you can actually purchase one expansion bay and if you don't require larger storage for each of the server you can assign eight drives on the first server and eight drive for the second server so you have expansion for two different servers but on the same exact on the same unit you just have to make sure you have sas cables connected to both servers and create your zones using the JBot manager, and that is it. Okay, so 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 server one won't be able to see anything from zone two, and server two won't be able to see any disk from zone one. So you can you can it does support that as well. Uh, we do have new two new cards to connect these two. Uh, so uh, for for the NAS, so this is for the NAS. So we have a dual port 12 SAS 12G card, which is a QXP 820 
SB3408. It's a Broadcom controller card. It's a PCIe Gen 3x8. And then we have a quad core or quad port card, which is a, which is a QXB 1620SB. 3616W and PCIe Gen 3 by 16. Now, um, with these cards, you can actually connect multiple expansions to the QNAP. Now you can actually have up to 16 with the new firmware, which is a 4.5.2, as long as your QNAP supports 4.5.2 firmware, and then it does support this new expansion cards. You can actually have up to 16 expansion units connected to one NAS and expand the storage. Now, if you, especially if you're using a QTS Hero operating system, you can actually have 1.35 petabytes of single storage pool with multiple expansion units. So you can do that as well with the new expansion units or, or if you don't want multiples. Uh, so that's one way to do it, right? You can actually have up to 16 expansion base connected to one NAS to have up to 1.25 petabytes of storage if you're using Hero. Or if you, if you only have single um, single expansion units. You can actually use multiple, um, uh, multiple, uh, multiple uh, SAS ports to provide redundancy and performance upgrade as well by multipath. So multi with multipath, you can connect. You can do link aggregation to achieve up to 96 gigabytes or gigabits of um, speeds. Uh, so you can have two cables going from the NAS to the expansion units. Uh, and then um, another two cables. So actually have four cables connected to the NAS to the expansion units. And if one of the cable goes down, the QNAP will automatically switch over to the other cable. Also, it will use all the four cables to give you up to 96 gigabits of uh, link speed with link aggregation. So it does support that. That's the reason we have multiple ports on the controller, on the new cards. And uh, because the SAS, uh, this, this, this uh, sorry, uh, this expansion bait, it, it supports SA, um, uh, SAS cards. Uh, sorry, it does support SATA drives uh, and SAS drives, but you, as you can know, SAS drive does get a little bit expensive. So you can, uh, so many of our users use it with the SATA drives. Now if you use save SATA drives, um, the connection speed of each of the drives are 12 gigabits per second because it does support SAS drives. But if you're using a six gigabits per second SATA drives, um, you will you will notice a performance degradation because it does have slower speed. So because it's connected to a slower speed drive. But, so to overcome that, um, you know, uh, there's a new technology called SAS data ball technology. This what this allows you to do is when you connect a SATA drive, it'll use buffer within the expansion bay to provide 12 gigabits of SAS performance even when you connect a six gigabit car, uh, six gigabit drives or SSD or HDD drives as well. So you use it will use a buffer in between. To um, to copy or to read and uh, write data, and then they will copy that data within the expansion uh, within the drives to give you a uh, performance upgrade when even when using a slower drive as well. All right, and then you can easily expand your storage. So if you use if you plan to use this with the uh, with the QNAP NAS, you can connect you can connect the SAS expansion card, and then you can connect the uh, SAS expansion unit unit to the card. Then you can expand the QNAP's RAID capacity. Um, but the major difference here between the TL units and the SAS units is the SAS units is capable of expanding the storage pool of the of the NAS. So if you have a storage pool that you created within NAS, you can now expand this by adding multiple expansion units to the expansion. So you can have up to 1.25 petabytes of storage capacity when you combine multiple expansion and a host device. Now the the units that I talked about before, the SATA, the the SATA TL expansion, the TR USB expansion, and even the TL USB expansion, those don't support expanding the NAS storage pool. You have to create a new storage pool within that expansion unit. But the only exception exception here is a SAS JBOD unit. The SAS JBOD unit does allow you to expand the storage pool of the current unit into into the expansion. So you can you can connect the expansion, create and expand the storage pool. You can you can definitely create your own storage pool, but you can also expand the current storage pool as well. So that that is available with the SAS expansion unit. And uh, we do have so if you connect this to a Windows Server uh, and with, paired with the QNAP JBoard Manager software, we have Broadcom. Uh, SAS expansion cards that you can that you can purchase to expand this. So we have uh, Mega Raid uh, 
9380-4IE, 4i4e uh, card that you can connect to your Windows computer that supports um, all these RAIDs. Um, uh, so RAID 0 to RAID 60, um, and uh, it does have the PCI Express card. So you can have multiple card options that you can have uh, that you can connect it to the to the SAS expansion unit. All right. So these are the expansion. These are the cards that will be required if you if you're going to be using it for or with your Windows Server part of it. Okay. So that is it for the for the um, for the PowerPoint. We're gonna switch over to the demo, and uh, let me stop my screen sharing. And then... All right. For today's demo, I have a TVS four seventy two XT with a TLD four hundred S. If you look at the about page, you're gonna be able to see it's a TVS four seventy two XT with a firmware version of four point five point two. This is what you require if you wanna use this new expansion bay. Now, if you look at the storage and snapshots you, you, under disk and virtual JBot, you're going to be able to see the new expansion bay that you have connected to the NAS. All right. And uh, if you look at the expansion bay, uh, it's going to, uh, if you click on the expansion bay, it's going to show you the model number, serial number, firmware version, power supply status, fan information, and their actions. You can locate that expansion bay by, by clicking on locate. It will start beeping. If you have multiple expansion bay you have connected, you can safely detach it. So if you have a storage pool created and you want to detach that storage pool so you can move the data over to another NAS, you can click on safely detach. And the, the, on the new NAS, you have to click on attach and recover storage pool to get access to your data. You can also check for firmware updates with the new with the expansion bay. And then the, for the SATA expansion card, because it does support multiple cables for larger units, uh, you can click on the you view expansion cards or Q, uh, QXP card status information to get information what ports are connected and how many disks are online right now. Remember, each of the port, each of the cable can carry up to four different hard drives. If you have four or more drives that are missing suddenly, you want to click on that QXP card connections page and find out which port or cable is not connected properly. That is one of the troubleshooting steps you can do. You can also perform performance tests on the new expansion bay on each of the disk so you can uh, you can see if it's on the same raid group or if it's the same storage pool you can now perform performance testing to see if any of the disks are performing slow because remember if one of the disk is performing slow the rest of the disk because it's on the same raid group will also perform a little bit slow as well and on each of the disks you can uh, now check the model number in, uh, information um, no, the current speed, maximum speed, and the disk information. You can get the serial number for the disk, capacity for the disk, former version of that disk, and the disk health. You can also get information about the disk status, or health status. You can also get smart information, uh, perform testing on that disk. Uh, under settings page, you can also schedule testing um, for all the disk, and also you can also do temperature in, uh, alert as well. So if it reaches certain threshold, it will start alerting you that the disk is running a little bit harder. All right, so uh, that's under the actions page. Uh, you can scan for bad blocks. You can locate that disk by blinking red on that expansion bay. You can secure or erase that disk if you don't want, or if you don't need data on that particular disk. And if you want to discard that disk, you can create, you can Create a new volume directly on top of that disk. So you can that's what you can do under lo uh, located or actions page. Now you can use two ways. Uh, you can use this expansion bay and all the new expansion bays like the TL expansion bay with the SATA connection and the TL USB expansion bays in two different manners. One, you can expand the NAS's storage space, right? You can create a storage pool and expand the NAS storage space so you can install. Um, applications, you can create volumes, you can use it as an iSCSI block LUN um, and create shared folders so you can all the users can work on it or you can use it as an external storage by um, by just connecting the disk. If you have a disk with an existing data, you can connect it to the expansion bay and just get access to that disk. You cannot install application, you cannot create iSCSI LUN, you cannot create volume, but this is a great method where you can just hard, hard plug a disk with the data, get access to the data, and if you and copy some more data, remove that disk, connect it to a computer or another operating system, and then um, use it that way as well. To do that, you have to click on external storage, 
click on each of the disk and you can under actions you can first you need to format that disk so you can format it in uh, Linux format like ext4, ext3, FAT32, NTFS format for um, uh, for you know Windows based operating system or HFS plus for you know Mac operating system as well once you format that disk you can now copy data and then you can and then under going back to actions you can eject that disk and once you eject the disk you can plug it into your computer get access to the data now remember you cannot create any RAID groups here you cannot do any kind of other application installation or creating volume or anything like that so it is just purely for using it as an external device but as the other method is under storage and snapshot right you can create new volumes you can create uh, snapshots uh, sorry you can create new volumes or you can create storage space so under create click on new storage pool you can also do queue tiering as well where uh, if you have ssd especially for larger units like 8 bay or 12 bay you can now and if you have ssd drives and hdd drives you can now um, create tiering where QNAP will automatically create a SSD RAID group and HDD RAID group in a, in a single storage pool and then it, it's going to look at your data and then it's going to put your hardest data where you use a lot into the SSD and the coldest data which you don't use a lot into the HDD. So the basic example I can give you is, is for video editors, right? Now video editors, um, if they work on a particular project, they work on, they work on it for a few days, right? So that the, that particular project will be stored in the SSD so they, they, they can get advantage of high speed connection via SSD and uh, or high speed uh, hard drives uh, sorry high speed drives with SSDs and then the projects that already been finished or older projects will be stored on higher uh, higher sized HDD so you can still keep that projects into your uh, into your into your NAS without have to without having to delete that because SSDs can can be smaller uh, in size, but HDD can go up to 18 terabytes now. So again, so you can do a Q-tiering as well. Um, for this one, we're just gonna go regular volume. Uh, you can click on all the disks to create a, a, a RAID group. You can select from RAID single to all the way to RAID 60 for larger uh, expansion base. You can also set up hot spare. So um, right here, this four will be my hot spare. What this allows, uh, the NAS to do is in case of one of the disks goes down, QNAP will automatically replace that uh, disk with disk 4. And let's say, for example, if disk 2 goes bad, then the QNAP will automatically replace it with disk 4, and the new disk 2 will be now be. You can set up that spare. You can also set up uh, under uh, advanced settings, you can set up thresholds so if it if you create volumes and if it reaches 80%, it, it'll alert you that the space is running low. And uh, next, and click on. Um, Create. Now remember, it will erase all the data on that particular disk. So, uh, so just click OK, and then it'll let let. And you can now it'll now create a storage pool. Now with storage pool, you can now create volumes. You can install applications on the expansion bay. You can migrate your current application if it's running low on the NAS host storage pool. Uh, you can migrate your ex, um, your applications onto the expansion bay. You can also create new folders shared folders on the expansion bay and then you can start using it as your new space or you can start using a new space for file servers maybe or for storing new data um, you can create iSCSI volumes with that uh, so you can now host it to a VMware environment hyper v environment and you can exp uh, and then the data new VMs will be stored on the expansion bay rather than the host internal space as well and with high speed connections like uh, 10 gigabit USB um, 3.1 Gen 2 or SATA expansions, it's going to give you a better speed when running it with the expansion bay. All right, so you can do all of that with the new expansion base. Um, once this expansion bay is, uh, once the storage pool is created, it's going to go through, um, you know, uh, initializing that storage pool. So that may take like synchronizing your array group. So that that takes about that takes a while, right? It can, it can take anywhere from like four to uh, 12 hours depending upon the size of the disk um, and if you use the NAS while it's doing that synchronization it may take longer so that now that my storage pool is now created I can create a new volume on top of that and uh, I can create a thick volume under storage pool 2 and then hit next and I can set um, I can set that space let's say for example 4 terabyte 
out of that and uh, under advanced settings you can now select encryption as well so the new volume will be encrypted um, and you can put in the password and save the encryption key you can create a new shared folder directly here I can name it as expansion and then hit next once I have uh, set up all the cor correct parameters I can click on finish it will start creating the new volume okay and once the new volume is created I can start using it uh, with the with the NAS I can also create in a block based iSCSI LUN where you can create uh, on the on the new expansion on the storage pool and the, the LUN will be in now on the expansion bay all right so it should now be initializing that volume and I can also I can also rename this volume to better suit my um, once this is done creating it I can also rename it under actions uh, so I know it's an expansion volume uh, so yeah that's uh, so once the volume is created I can now start using that volume to uh, to do more like I'll show you how to migrate install applications on all of that as well and I can use it with my Samba services AFP services FTP all those protocols will now work for the new shared folder that I created it's not going to format that particular disk Right, so the volume is now created it's ready to go so under app center I can click on any of the applications and then click on migrate to and I can now select the new volume that I just created and it will migrate to that particular volume if I go to install a new application um, it will give me the pop-up box where, where do you want to install this application I can select the new volume here as well um, when I create a new shared folder under shared folders and I click on create shared folder I could get now have the ability to create a shared folder on that new volume I just created so all of that is now available and uh, and now see the new expansion uh, folder is now available so I can now access it via my uh, computer as well so if I go under connect to server and enter the new IP address of my server see expansion may is now an option that I can copy data to or copy from okay so I can do all of that with the new expansion base so this is how you can actually use it with the new uh, expansion bay when you connect it to your QNAP NAS the next demo will go through how you can use it with the computer all right so thank you very much all right I'm gonna uh, provide another demo so the previous demo we were uh, we went through showing you how you can use the expansion bay when you connect it to a QNAP NAS but this particular demo I'm gonna show you is about what happens when you connect this expansion to a computer so I have a Windows 10 uh, uh, Windows 10 pro, uh, professional version uh, so if you look at the systems page this is Windows uh, uh, Windows 10 Pro computer that I've connected this expansion to I've connected a SATA expansion in it a TLD 400s so so as I mentioned you need to use the QNAP JBot manager software so if you look at the software that is installed right here you can see you can so with the JBot manager, you can check the status of your uh, JBot. So you can see the firmware version, the the system temperature, um, what type of bus is connected with, and all that information that you can see right here. You can also check port status. So you can see how many ports are connected. You can also check the mapping table. Um, so to understand how many ports, how many cables are connected to the SATA expansion unit, and how many disks are connected currently. You can also go to disk information to get more information about the status of the disk. You, know, you can check the disk status information as well, the former version for that particular disk. You can check out that here as well. Um, under the uh, uh, under the settings page, you can just give both basic information about the uh, about the software itself, firmware information. You can upload the firmware as well. You can check for new firmware as well from this page it, itself. 
And then uh, if you have multiple expansions connected, you can also switch your expansions using this button. And under action, you can locate this expansion. So you can start BP, you can view mapping table, you can rename this expansion, you can edit alerts. So if you have, if you wanna keep your uh, audio alerts on or off, you can turn it off from here as well. And then you can also do uh, uh, eject as well. So if you do eject, it will eject the whole expansion together. So if you have all the four base, so for, especially for USB expansions, okay? So if you eject this, it will eject all the four base from the unit itself. Um, so going back, so the, this is the Windows JBot Magic. Quickly, you can get information about your disk information, the enclosure health information, firmware version. Disk information gives you information about the disk. You can also click on here to check the smart information. This will also change if the disk is about to go bad, it will get a warning and abnormal if the disk has already go bad, so you can all replace the disk. The firmware information quickly gives you information about the firmware of the unit. You can also upload, uh, download and upload firmware. If you have multiple expansions, you can change the expansion bay right here. And then under actions, you can click on locate. So it'll start beeping on the expansion unit itself. So it will let you know uh, which expansion you're trying to work with. You view mapping table. This is especially for say, SAS and um, SATA expansion. You, you, you can check right here how many cards are connected, how many cables are connected, so you can check what, what is going on with your unit and everything is working fine or not. Um, under rename, you can rename your uh, expansion unit. You can edit alerts, you can turn off audio on and off, uh, alerts for on and off. And under eject, you can eject this expansion completely, so all the disks will be ejected. So you have to remember, if you just, if especially if you're using, using it with the USB expansion, if you're using it, uh, if you eject it, the whole expansion gets ejected. All the disks get ejected, uh, and you know everything is disconnected. If you're using the NAS, make sure you don't uh, you, you're not writing to it, and you're not copying anything to it, or you're not you have you don't have anything open when you eject it. There's one way to eject it. All you can eject one particular disk at a time. So the, on a Windows computer, you can click on safely eject hardware, and you'll see all the four disks that I've connected. You can eject one at a time. Now, if you're using if you have a RAID setup. I would not recommend ejecting each of the disks because that will create the problem. Well, it would degrade the rate, right? So don't create eject disks together when you're using it as part of the rate. Now, this software, apart from the other software we had to manage your TR, this doesn't create or manage your rate. This is just basic software to allow you to see what's going on with your expansion unit and your disk. But with QNAP, sorry, with you're, with the operating system you're using, you can create RAID. Special, uh, so for a Windows computer, you can click on storage space to create your RAID. So you can click on manage storage spaces, you can create a new storage, new pool or new storage space to combine all the disk in a RAID, um, RAID format and then create a, a larger RAID disk as well. Now before I do that, let me show you what happens when you go to disk status information, right? If you look at create a format disk or disk management software of your computer, you will see all the you will see all the new four disks that you've created, right? You can uh, create a uh, GTP partition, MDR partition, and then you can now create a new volume if you want to just use it as a single RAID. So for if you don't want to if you don't want if you don't care about RAID and you just want to use this bunch of disks, you can just you can just create a partition right here, um, and then you can select the partition and then assign a, a drive letter to it. And then you just use it as a bunch of disks. You don't have to uh, you have to create a RAID. You can just start using it as a bunch of disks, and then everything will start working. You can eject that eject that disk, move it to another computer. Um, also, you can move it to a uh, NAS to copy the data on off of it on it, and then you know connect it back to your expansion unit to access the data again. So this is if you want to use it, it's just basically an external storage, a, a USB storage. You can use that as well. Um, but again, there's no RAID protection right here. So if you lose a disk, you lose that data for that particular disk, everything is lost for that particular disk. So just keep that in mind. Or you can create something called storage space. What, uh, what this allows you to do is, this will allow you to create a new storage space. You can select the disk you want for that particular drive. You can click on create pool. And it was gonna create a single large disk of that, uh, all, combining all of that disk. So now the pool is created, the capacity is 21.8 terabyte. I think each of the, each of the disk is 5.46 terabytes. So that's combining all of that to give you 20, 21.8 terabyte. <clears throat> now the rate type you choose is under resiliency type. So you can select two-way mirror, 
to copy, no, it writes two copies of the data to help protect from a single drive failure. Um, you can also select no resiliency, like a RAID 0, uh, RAID 5 type option. You can select a three-way mirror to so can protect from two disk failures at the same time, like RAID 6, and then um, parity, which allows you to have um, from a single drive pair, similar to drive, um, drive uh, RAID 5 again. So you can select the correct, uh, uh, the correct um, type of, uh, type of resiliency type. So two-way mirror again is RAID 1, uh, three-way mirror is RAID 6, and then parity is RAID 5, similar to what I'm saying. Um, so that would be your resiliency type. Once you select the, all of that, um, you can select the partition type, the file system, you can select the drive letter you wanted to, and then you can select the, the maximum size. So and let's say I, I'm going to create a whole, uh, uh, all, the, the, all the size that I have available and click on create storage pool. It's going to start formatting. It's going to create a rate and it's going to start formatting that. And then uh, it, will, it will give me that particular space. And now if I go to my computer, Windows computer, under this PC, you're going to see that 21 terabyte of uh, storage pool that I created. Now I can use it as a volume, start copying data onto, on, on it, you know, start writing data. If you're using it for video editing, uh, you can also use it for as a video editing. Um, storage space, you can start writing to that data. Um, if you're using it with your Hyper-V environment, you can just provide this storage space into your Hyper-V. You can start installing VMs on top of that or provide more storage to the VMs on uh, for that particular for that particular unit, right? So you can now do all of that and, um, and that is your rate basically on your QNAP. All right, so that will be it for today's demo. Uh, we're gonna go back to uh, Q&A. The first question I had was uh, for the T uh, is the software rate on the TLS fast as hardware rate on the TR. So so hardware rate is is basically a little faster always because it's hardware rate. But then but but what happens is because with software rate you have more disks. So the TR unit only comes with the four disk uh, system, right? So you, um, you're only combining up to four disks uh, with the TR unit. But with TL unit you have an option from eight or twelve. Uh, uh, 8 or 12 drive base. So with software RAID with 8 and 12 drive base, you can get more performance out of it, out of the unit, because you have more disks to work with. Um, and uh, so that is the advantage of it. And also the T TL unit is at USB 3.2 Gen 2, which is a 10 gigabit connection speed. So as, as, you, as you saw the performance numbers, you can get up to you know, 1,000 megabytes per second, which is what the U which is saturating your USB 3.2 Gen 2 speeds. So you're getting maximum speed out of the unit, or out of the connection with those with the TL unit. So that's the advantage of having that. Uh, another question is any specific um, any specifics you can talk about for video DVR storage. So um, uh, specifically for the client looking to add 30 cameras uh, to store three to four weeks of video. Uh, okay, so for this unit, if you're specifically looking for the expansion bay, then you can, if you're using something like a milestone software, any NVR software on your computer, like a Windows computer or uh, a Linux computer, you can connect your new expansion bay to those to that computer, create a, a storage space, and then uh, create a storage pool as 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 I showed you with, uh, on the demo before, and then you can create. A, let's say I, and in the previous demo, I created 21 terabyte of storage space. You can then format it and then provide that to your DVR software or to your milestone software. And then the milestone software will start writing to that particular, uh, to that particular expansion bay. And with 21 terabytes, uh, you should be able to get three to four weeks of video storage depending upon the resolution you have um, or uh, depending upon the resolution of the camera uh, as well. Now, if, so that's your, uh, that's the third party software. But if you're using it with the QNAP NAS, we do have our own serverless software, which is called QVR Pro or QVR Elite, or even serverless station. You can also use the expansion bay with those. If you connect it to your QNAP NAS, you can then use it with the expansion bay and then you know just have the expansion bay recording all the storage space. You should be able to get about 30, uh, three to four weeks of video, depending upon you know, resolution of the camera uh, onto that expansion bay. So that is another advantage of having uh, the expansion bay. You can connect it to your computer and use it with your DVR and VR software. Now, if you're looking for DVR, DVRs are, have a very closed down software, so they won't be able to support an expansion bay like this because it can't create an, ex, 
I form a, 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 a rate system on top of that. So you may want to use something like TR where it has a hardware rate and you can format it. It may work with your DVR software, but again, it depends upon the DVR. But if you have an NVR that records that can be installed on a computer, like a Windows or Linux computer, you can use it with that as well. Um, are you able to use, uh, another question is, are you able to attach um, large capacity NAS directly to an HP, HP server? So, um, and what software and what parts I would need for hardware and software. So yes, you can connect it to an HP server, uh, uh, the SAS expansion, even the SATA and uh, uh, USB expansion, the software you would require is a Genap JBAR manager software. If you're using it, if you're using a SAS expansion unit, then you need to have the SAS card. Uh, for SATA expansion units, you do get a card with the unit. So you can just connect that to your computer. Um, for USB, you don't require any kind of software, uh, any kind of hardware, as long as you you have a USB 3.2 Gen 2 port. It does work with older generations. Just the speed will be limited to that generation. Um, another question: Is it possible to is it possible with SAS JBAR to have a storage pool over 250 terabyte? I'm guessing you're using this with uh, with uh, with the QTS NAS, uh, QTS NAS, uh, with, because it's using, it uses the EXT4 file system, the storage pool is limited to 308 terabyte, and the the volume is limited to 250 terabyte. So unfortunately, that's just limitation of the file system. But if you're using it with the, but if you do have a QT, QTS Hero NAS, then you can actually go up to 1.25 terabyte storage pool. And uh, because it's a ZFS file format. It does not require uh, a shared folder. It doesn't require a volume layer, so you can now create a shared folder that is 1.25 petabyte of storage space, or you can create a LUN, which is a iSCSI LUN, which is 1.25 terabyte of uh, petabyte of uh, LUN space. So you can have logic capacity with QTS here, but with QTS NAS, you limit it to 250 terabyte. But you can create multiple volumes to get it still use up all the space for that storage pool. So what is the maximum size of the volumes on the QTS Hero? So there's no volume layer anymore. You just create a large storage pool with 1.25 petabytes of storage, and then you just create a shared folder or iSCSI LUN, which is a 1.25 petabyte of that. Has a price point been announced for the TL products? Yes, it's, it is available on uh, through our distributors, resellers, and, uh, so, and online. Um, uh, utilities as well, so you can get uh, get information from there directly. All right, so there's another uh, there's a scenario with two servers using Windows 2016 and 2019, both of them having Hyper-V running. Could I attach a QNAP server with two zones and do backups of the Hyper-V, and then have a solution where QNAP is able to do backups to another remote unit or online to a permanent storage service. How will this be configured? So yes, you can have a SAS expansion unit uh, and connect it to your 2016 and 2019 Hyper-V Windows server. Create two zones. Zone one would be for your 2016 and zone two would be your 2019 server. And then you can have, um, you can, both of them running Hyper-V, uh, so if you're using it for backup, then I don't think it's a good idea to use the expansion bay to that particular, to the Hyper-V directly. You want to use, you can use QNAP's Hyper Data Protector, which is an application you can install on the NAS. And then if you, if if I'm what I'm thinking is, if you're just using it for backup, then we don't recommend using it with the, with the expansion. You can just connect the expansion to a NAS. You can NAS as a larger space, and then you can, you can install the application called Hyper Data Protector, which is a license-free VM backup application for Hyper-V. And then that application will back up all your VMs onto the NAS. And then if the NAS has not has low space or it doesn't have that much space available, you can connect the SAS expansion unit to the NAS. And then you can back up all the VMs to the expansion units. And then, and then you had another question where you can, uh, can you back up those VMs onto the other QNAP NAS? That that application currently doesn't support backing up the data onto another NAS, but that service is coming. 
it should be available on a future update for Hyper Data Protector, but you can use it. But let's say for another scenario I can give you is you can connect this to a Windows 2016 and 2019 server, create two zones on the same expansion bay. You can then expand your Hyper-V space to that expansion units and install more VMs or provide more storage to your VMs onto the expansion bay. So you can do that as well. I think that will, I think that was the that that is a that is all for the questions. So if you guys have any further questions, you can always get back to us at USSales at QNAP com. And hopefully, I was able to answer all your questions. Thank you for joining the webinar. Thank you again, guys. And we will be sending a follow up to uh, with a copy of the uh, video embedded as well of this webinar. Thank you for joining us.